Good morning, everybody. It is 12 minutes past 8 o'clock right now. Welcome back to the program. Lou and Jackie here. And folks, we've been telling you this morning that uh, one of the things that we mentioned you can't celebrate today is today is National Simplicity Day. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, trying to make things a little easier in your everyday life. And uh, just by coincidence, uh, there was an article that was in City View talking about that very thing, talking about minimalism. And we have the author of said article in studio with us right now. Christian Day is joining us. And uh, um, uh, interesting things. Uh, article really makes you stop and go, wow, what if I applied some of the things that you apply to your life in their everyday life. Right. So, so Christian, what does that mean to you, to be a, a minimalist or to have simplicity in your life? What did that personally mean to you to eventually write this article? You know, th this happened to me about two and a half years ago, right? It really hit me. Um, my office, like anyone else's home office, is usually just cluttered, papers everywhere. And one day I finally decided to get rid of everything. I just, I literally threw it all in the trash which bills and things you probably shouldn't throw in the yeah, trash. I just got thing. rid of them. I got rid of them and all of a sudden just things started clicking again. I actually felt like I could be creative and I, I work in an industry that it just it's a, it lives off creativity. Now tell everybody what you do. Um, I've been a filmmaker um, working different roles in the film industry for 10 years now mm -hmm. and um, I've commuted to LA um, for the past five. Um, but I still live here in Des Moines. Okay. Um, and we last saw you when you were talking about uh, the film fest this, in the, correlation with the arts festival. Yes, yes. I actually, there's, I, I love to connect with our community in some way, whether it's writing for City View or working with the Des Moines Arts Festival. Um, you know, I work in, a, in an industry that this really isn't a market for it. So to actually be involved directly with the community is a little bit difficult because I'm gone a lot. Okay. Um, so, you know, when I was able to write this and share some of my thoughts about minimalism, the, how it's shaped my life, um, I, I felt like I was kind of giving back a little bit, you know, and, and I want people to understand that I'm, I'm not OCD about this stuff. And anyone who reads, I know a lot of people when they dive into something, they just dive all in with it. Mm. And you don't have to. You know, I was without a car for about a year and a half to two years. And it was great. Um, but I was also in a situation when I worked in the film industry, if I was flying to another state, production got me a rental car. So I had no really reason to have a car back home. Sure. I wasn't driving so, it So anyway. the fact you didn't have a car was because of the situation? Yeah, okay. yeah, the car, the car died. I was getting ready to leave for six months on a show. I didn't need a car here. But when I got back, I was like, I kinda, I kinda wanted to start walking places. And I got to really know my neighborhood that I really didn't, because normally you get in the car and you're out, you're going to work, you're going here. Right. And it slowed me down, you know, I, I I can't emphasize that word slowing down enough because we get so caught up and we're always like, we got to get to here fast or we're waking up late. And, and, you know, by doing that, that made my life just feel like I actually, I was present again by slowing down. You would actually walk miles. Miles. To get to where you needed to go around our community. Like when I think of a, a and I know we're trying harder to make our city a more walkability uh, area mm -hmm. uh, and better with transit and things like that so we don't have to re rely on uh, various uh, modes of transportation but you think of that like when you're in New York like right. I can get anywhere I need to go in New York by walking or taking a subway or, or a train or something like that I don't necessarily think about that here in Des Moines if I if I live in West Des Moines how am I supposed to get you know yeah to my work to downtown things like the that. first big challenge is I did a I did a, an artist residency with Art Force Iowa which we work with inner city kids mm -hmm. um, and do art projects together well, I live on Polk Boulevard by the Art Center. I had to go over by North High School every day for That's that. a jaunt. Well, I walked. I walked you from, walked? I walked from How Polk Boulevard. How long did Boulevard, that take you? About two hours, so two and a half hours. So what did you discover when you walked there? Well, I learned, I, first off, I learned I learned the streets very well. Like where <laughs> things were. Um, but it was a great time because I was listening to, I was doing my audio books. I was, and, and I would leave, you know, I'd leave a couple hours before I needed to be there. But I also, like, if I needed to stop somewhere, I learned where things were at. Um, as the weather got nicer, you know, it became a little bit easier. When it was cold, you know, it's February. It's like, oh you man. You were walking in February? Oh yeah, it's fine. You just do it. Wait, were you, so wow. were you discovering maybe stores or houses Store, you didn't realize Stores, that neighborhoods. Existed, uh, people. Yeah. And I, I got to see the, the, the whole gentrification that was happening on, um, I forget what street that's on that actually North High School is on, but it was starting to change and get mm -hmm. cleaned up. And actually being able to witness it, because I mean, normally, I mean, I would just drive past it and not even stop or look you at it. You had blinders on. Yeah. You just had blinders on. You're just like, I'm going here. I don't care about anything being between. And I would just, I would, again, slow it down, take a look around, and it was great. Now, something else that you did that seems a little shocking to the rest of us is you gave up 
pretty much all modes of social media. I did. Okay. I How did. difficult a decision was that? Uh, well, it wasn't that bad. You know, I was in a position, it was about, it was about 2015 when I gave up Facebook. Um, I used to own the movie theater in Fairfield. Um, I had made a little bit of money on the Templeton Rye film I did years ago. Um, and I decided to invest it in a movie theater in a college town of only 10,000 people. I ran it for about a good two years. But at the end of the day, even when after all the bills were paid, it wasn't necessarily worth keeping open. Mm -hmm. And I knew that once I shut it down, I was just going to get attacked with questions and whatever. And I, I said, I don't really feel like I need to answer to anybody about this. It's your decision. It's my decision. And people, because we have social media and we have this interaction, we feel that everyone owes us an explanation for things. I'm and not, right away, too. And right away. And I'm not a public servant here. I'm, I mean, I'm just a guy who had a, who had a business, don't want to do it anymore, I want to shut it down, and I just want to be done with it. And that was an easy way to just like, all right, I'm just going to shut this down. And a couple weeks later, we, we closed the theater, and I never looked back. And there was a little hard because there's people that you think that you need to be connected to. But at the same time, I feel like if there's someone in your life that you are going to be, going to be connected to going forward, there's still there's still a telephone. There's still email. I, I love letter writing. Mm -hmm. I mean, just that just the practice of that. Facebook made it so easy and gave you the sense that you were fulfilling whatever your friendship duties were by just liking something here and there. That's mm -hmm. not really doing anything. It's more creepy than anything else. Yeah. So you're saying just you're, you're still have a way of communicating. Obviously, you need to because you're working. Yes. But you're just saying instead of doing it the quick, easy, and, and I like your reference. I think you said it, it's like uh, almost caffeine or, or something like we always have to constantly. We need yeah. to be need picking the fix. up. We yeah. need the fix of picking mm -hmm. up our phone or checking Facebook and things like right. that. And you're saying do do something the old-fashioned way, you know, like actually pick up a phone or talk to somebody and email. Like we're not completely disconnecting ourselves. But maybe exactly. Don't make it so accessible. You can, because you can't turn a blind eye on technology. Totally. No. You, there's no way you this this is our world. It's the world we live in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and the other thing is I had a bunch of guys and, and freelancers that work in my industry, and they're like, well, what about work opportunities? I'm like, I've never got any work on Facebook. You know, mm -hmm. I work really consistently, and it's by people who call me or send me an email and say, can we book you for this? Right. It's, it had nothing to do with Facebook. And I feel like even Facebook from an employment standpoint can probably cause more damage than it can right, for help with people checking made. up yeah. on you and things right. like that. That soapbox, we think it's this giant soapbox where we can just spew everything. And a lot of this because people feel like they're not being heard. Mm -hmm. So they find this avenue. So have you found yourself even wanting to get back on Facebook or no, Instagram? No, not at all. You know, and I, you know, I, I talked about this one piece in here because I do a lot of photography work. I've done some work for some different magazines. And uh, I said, if I was going to take photos, I, I don't necessarily just want to have that easy access of just posting it real quick and then you know you get a hundred likes and you, you get that surge right if it's if it's good enough I'm gonna submit it and get it published and that was my that was my new goal and and that has made a huge difference just like writing I mean I wasn't writing for City View when I was on social media um, I was writing for a couple magazines I'm, I'm a big horror movie fan so I was doing stuff for Fangoria when they were still around and I said you know what? why don't I pitch some of my art some of my story ideas to City View and now it's getting published not posting it online Just or whatever. Perfect. Perfect. You know. All right. Well, on this National Simplicity Day, maybe challenge yourself. Maybe, uh, you know, don't do Facebook or one of your social media, um, we'll say addictions. Uh, I know mm -hmm. I'm addicted uh, mm -hmm. today. Or maybe go walk somewhere to an appointment right. that you have or, or go visit your walk around your neighborhood that you haven't in a while. But you can learn more to uh, the recent City View that is out on stands. And if they want to learn more about you, ChristianDay.com, correct? That's correct. All yeah. right. Thank All right, you for joining us. Maybe take a walk somewhere and then post about your experience. <laughs> we can no, read about no. it. Okay. No. I'm just trying to help. Okay. Thank you so hey, much, thank man. You. We appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thank you for being in here.